Hey, what's going on there? This is Wayne with Tri-County Locksmith Service and uh, we're going to be doing some actual real testing on your favorite lubricants today. Now this is uh, more specifically generated uh, and, and the testing is more specifically done uh, specifically for locks. Um, but there's a whole lot of uh, confusion and, and um, you know, disagreements out there about what is really actually good for your locks and what is actually a really good lubrication. And so what I want to do is go ahead and put these lubrications to the test because a lot of them have a few of the same ingredients uh, just branded differently. So today we're going to strip away all the branding, all the marketing, all the stuff that goes behind them, and we're actually going to see what the different lubricants actually do and use. Uh, this is actually going to kind of be my uh, selection of favorite to least favorite um, lubricants before the testing. So just keep in mind that um, we'll find out the answers for sure. But just based off of what I've heard and what I've seen uh, in the industry and in the field, this is kind of how I have it laid out in my head right now. I really like the 100% dry Teflon right here. Uh, it, it's basically mixed with uh, rubbing alcohol and then it actually dries 100% dry. Uh, Triflow has always been fairly good to me. Um, you know, this stuff here, it's got high tolerances for heat and cold and it basically has some P, it says with PTFE spray as well. Um, so this is kind of a penetrates and protects formulated with PTFE okay and then you'll notice right here we actually have a PTFE spray uh, so we'll go ahead and check this stuff out too uh, this is claiming that it's a dry lubrication as well uh, says it's ideal for blades bits door windows side rollers power tools hinges equipment doesn't really say that it's good uh, for locks but it says safe for use on wood paper fabric leather metal and most plastics uh, except for clear polycarbonate. Temperature range is going to be from negative 50 degrees to 500 degrees. That's going to be important because that's one of the things that's going to break stuff down. And I'm actually, we're actually going to really, really get in there and really test this stuff. Let's see if this has a temperature rating on it or not. Um, let's see. Not really. So I don't see one on there right away. There may be one. You can read into it later if you want. Uh, this is one of the other things that I found I have, um, and, and used uh, a couple different times on different things. Um, this is multi-use Teflon, uh, lubrication with Teflon. So this says it's for door hinges, um, you know, locks, sliding glass doors, metal windows, threaded parts, hand tools, latches, power equipment, and more. Uh, this one says it's good from negative 20 degrees up to 300 plus degrees. So we're definitely going to be testing that out. Here's the big dirty word in the in the lock industry is uh, WD-40. Um, you know, I mean, it, it does loosen things up and it does help you uh, clean and, and protect some stuff. It's better than nothing. Um, but it's one of those things that some people feel really strongly against and some people feel really strongly for. So uh, we'll just go ahead and see what it does inside the lock there. Uh, so this stops, squeaks, cleans, protects, loosens, rest parts, free sticky mechanisms drives out moisture, uh, lubricates hinges, wheels, rollers, chains, gears, uh, cleans grease, penetrates, uh, displaces moisture. It's not giving me a temperature range rating on that one. Um, and then we've got a silicone spray here. Okay, so our silicone spray, uh, this says it's the same stuff, use slippery action, clear wet film, uh, nonstick coating, repels moisture, Low odor, safe on painted surfaces, great for large surface areas, rubber, wood, plastic, metal, snow shovels, uh, garden doors, snow blowers, wheelbarrows. So this one doesn't really say it's for uh, locks either. And I'm just briefly reading over this uh, to see if there's a temperature rating. <coughs> and I'm not seeing one very at this very moment. Um, so we'll go ahead and check that stuff out too. Uh, here's a lithium grease. This stuff is kind of neat because it does thicken up as a, as a grease, but it'll go into uh, the small spaces as an aerosol. Uh, it'll kind of dry and, and not really dry, like dry to the touch, but it'll coagulate and thicken up. Uh, this one says it is good for temperature rating from 0 degrees Fahrenheit up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Provides uh, heavy-duty lubrication and corrosion protecting. 
that won't melt, freeze, or ruin or run in any weather. Hinges, gears, sprockets, doors, excellent for overhead tractors, lubricating before placing things in storage, cables, latches. Uh, it doesn't exactly say locks on here, but that's okay too. Uh, and then uh, the good old graphite. Um, graphite is mixed opinions. Uh, this is why I don't like to use it because I keep it in this baggie and look at how dirty this baggie is. Um, it just covers everything and when you use it and work with it all the time, it gets on your hands, it gets on your workplace, you just drag it around, it follows you around like mud and it just makes a mess of your, your work area and um, all, all, everything that you come in contact with every single day, you're basically covered in this stuff if you use it. So it, it does work good but I just don't like the mess that it makes all the time continuously. The other thing is if you mix this with any of these, you're going to pretty much create concrete. So if somebody's already used graphite and you don't flush it out with a uh, solvent before you use one of these, you're pretty much going to seize your lock up after a particular point in time. So this is the playing field here. Uh, we're gonna heat these locks up to about 450, 500 degrees right in there. Uh, they're actually cooking up in the oven right now. I've coated all the locks. I've marked and labeled each one of them. They're all six pin uh, US lock cylinders with working keys, all brand new. They've been washed out with solvent, so there's no factory lubricant in them. Uh, and the biggest things that are going to deteriorate a lock lubricant is heat, moisture, and dirt, and the cold. So we're going to test all of those things. We've got them baking in the oven now to simulate extreme heat. Uh, we're going to dunk them as soon as they come out of the oven. We're going to dunk them in some snow and get some water and, and some, you know, debris and stuff mixed in there. Then we're going to stick them in a vacuum and uh, in the hose of the vacuum. And I'm going to vacuum up a bunch of dirt and grit and grime to simulate wind that's blowing stuff around. We're trying to generate years of wear and tear uh, and harsh conditions in a matter of a couple hours. So that's going to generate that dirt and grit. And then we're going to go ahead and put them in the freezer. We're going to see if they work in the freezer, which ones seize up, which ones, um, you know, operate best. And then when we're all said and done, I'm going to take each lock apart and we're actually going to see what's inside of there and see what happened, see which lubricants worked well, see which ones broke down, see which ones attracted the most uh, dirt and grit and see where we're at with this. So stay with me and uh, enjoy. All right, so we've got our snow here, and uh, we've got our locks all cooked up, and they're good and hot. They've been in the oven at 450 degrees for about an hour. Just dump them right in there. Mix them up a little bit. You can see that that heat is getting to them, and they're starting to cool off. So this is going to be snow, moisture, all that kind of stuff that happens with locks when they're outside. You know, rapid heating and rapid cooling like this. This is going to get all down inside of there and there's dirt and dust and, and all kinds of stuff mixed in with that snow. They must be cool enough now. Touch. So, make sure they get good and mixed up in there. See, there's twigs and all kinds of stuff. Okay, so now that we've got that in there, um, we will go ahead and move on to the next test uh, and we'll just go ahead and uh, put these in a vacuum and we'll suck some dirt and debris through there to simulate wind and dirt and dust and uh, see what happens then. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now to simulate wind and, uh, you know, just time and wind and dirt and things like that in aggregate uh, is we got all these locks here. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck them up in this shop vac and they will, because they're so heavy, they will get picked up, but then they're going to get stuck in the belly of this. So it'll be like being in a gigantic wind tunnel because it doesn't have enough, it has enough power to pick them up, but it doesn't have enough power to suck them all the way into the, uh, the vacuum here. And I'll show you what I mean. I plug this thing in. Okay, 
So even though it was on, it still actually it was just sitting right in there, along with the tile, nail, and some drill bits. So that's how this is going to work. And then all this dust that basically just kind of dumped out my shop vac and hair and dust and and dirt and grit and wood chips and metal filings and all the nasty stuff that's going to be blowing around in the air. It's just an extreme example of that. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I just want to take a break here and actually try the keys out in each one of these. Uh, this is going to be our dry silicone lubricant. It goes in very nice, still operating quite smooth. Try flow. Ooh, that's not good. Hmm, a little sticky. PTFE spray. That one was a little sticky too. A little crunchy going in. Mm. Our multi use Teflon spray. A little crunchy for that stuff going in too. Everything's a little crunchy in there now. So far, the best has still been the dry lubricant. We'll try our WD here. And you can see how that oil starts to burn on here uh, when it gets those higher temperatures. Surprisingly, that one's actually not too crunchy and not too bad. Um, but you can see how it does start to deteriorate in the heat. lithium grease. The silicone didn't seem to be too crunchy. Oh, that's actually fairly smooth for such a heavy kind of oil. And then again, you're going to start to see some of that burning from the oil. And here's our good old graphite. Ooh. Mmm. Boy, it won't even go. The key won't even go back in there. <clears throat> smacks. Nope. <clears throat> Key's not going to go in. So something has lodged itself in here and, and jammed this up already. So be it the heat or the water or something. Uh, so graphite has already kind of lost this battle. All right. So we're going to take all this stuff. We're going to stick it in the freezer and we're going to see how these lubricants perform under cold temperatures. We've already done hot 450 degrees for an hour. That's why some of the oils are burnt. Uh, we've done dirt, we've put them in the vacuum in a basic wind tunnel with all kinds of nasty dirt, metal, grimy, uh, nasty stuff that would basically simulate wind blowing materials around uh, and then dumped them in there and shook them around a bit. Uh, we also put them in the snow so there's water and things in there and I'm guessing what happened with this one is the water probably got in there and probably made a kind of concrete 
uh, with that. So um, one more test left to do. We'll see how they work and we're going to test them while they're still cold too because some of these lubricants uh, could freeze up and not allow the pins to move properly. So stay tuned. Okay, I did want I did want to make one edit to the video. For some reason, all my other lock cylinders did not have the tailpiece in here, and I ended up figuring out that that's what was wrong with this graphite one. I took it apart real quick just to ch double check it because it shouldn't be filled up that bad already. But it just had that tailpiece on there, and it actually prevented the uh, dirt from falling through, and that's what stopped the key from going in. So after that was removed, uh, you can see that this does work. Uh, it is it is a little uh, stiff and crunchy. Um, but it does work. So this one's back in the running uh, for all the, the graphite fans out there. Uh, so continue to watch. Okay, uh, we've taken these lock cylinders and I have gone ahead and let them sit in the freezer overnight. Uh, you can probably see, hopefully the camera will pick up the ice crystals and whatnot on here. Um, maybe try and get it to focus a little bit better on that. See if it'll come in here. Um, and uh, so you can see where I touch it, it's, it comes, starts to thaw a little bit. Um, and I don't know exactly how cold that fridge gets uh, or the freezer gets, but I know I left them in there overnight and I know it keeps about uh, 400 pounds of meat cold all the time, uh, frozen solid. So uh, it's definitely plenty cold in there. Um, as cold as you're going to come across in an environment. Uh, so the whole point of this test is to see um, oil has a viscosity rating and any of the oily based lubricants are going to thicken up in a cold atmosphere. Uh, anybody knows when you go to start your car when it's cold, the oil just is like molasses. Um, so I want to see how that affects all of these and we'll just go ahead and these are fresh out of the freezer. This is the dry Teflon. Works perfect, no problem. Very smooth. This is the Triflow. That one's a little stiff and sticky. Uh, definitely more resistance uh, with this one here. Um, so definitely a little bit more resistance there, but it, it does still operate. Oh, one more thing I did want to add. Uh, from the time that we did the uh, water, I did bake these locks one more time before I put them in the freezer because I know obviously if they're full of water, they're not going to work properly. So we did bake all the water out of these uh, one more time and heat treat them again. So PT FE spray, very difficult to get the key in. And definitely some feels like it's kind of trying to break it loose as we go in there so um, you know probably even worse than the the tri flow or maybe equal to uh, as far as resistance goes for that one opening right there all right multi-use teflon lubricant this is really cold on my hands definitely getting some resistance there uh, probably more so than the other two as well. Um, quite a bit of force needed to put that in there. And you can just feel that it's cold and not moving very well. So that is that. A good old WD-40. Actually, that's probably one of the smoothest ones. Um, that's probably even smoother than the Tri-Flow, uh, to be perfectly honest there. Silicone spray. That one works very well as well, nice and smooth. White lithium grease. That one had some push to it. Mm. A little snap, a little crunch. And the little graphite uh, goes right in. No problems at all. So, 
that's the cold test. Uh, it seemed like one, two, three over here. Uh, these these were the slowest. These were the hardest to put the key in and the hardest to uh, actually get it going. Probably the hardest one of all was probably the, uh, the this one right here. Um, so I'm kind of curious to see what that's going to look like inside there. But uh, yeah, definitely in the in the super super cold. That's the kind of stuff that you're going to see with these different ones. The, the super, super dry. This one was the easiest to do in the cold, um, just from, from what I saw here. So um, That's how these are going to react after they've been heated up, after the lubricant started to break down, after we've added some dirt and grit to it, and then uh, put them in the cold. Uh, it seems as though the, this one seems to work the best. And actually, the WD is kind of uh, surprising me so far. Uh, it's actually, uh, it was pretty easy to, uh, to turn that and offered one of the least resistance out of, out of all of them. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, start taking these apart here in just a minute and uh, see what it looks like inside. So, Well, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to be able to do this kind of stuff and actually, um, you know, do these kind of experiments and see exactly what goes on in here and what does what when it's actually put, applied uh, in real life. So um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do uh, the, a test. A good test for this is, um, let's see here, we're going to be, when I pull this key out, you'll see how the pins move, okay? Them moving smoothly like that and not getting stuck in any one position is exactly what we want to see. So the dry Teflon right here is a perfect example of what we want to see. We want to see that move and everything moves nice and easy in there. We also are looking for burning. That means that's a sign of the, uh, the lubricant deteriorating or breaking down. Obviously there's not very much of that here, if not any at all. Uh, so this is a perfect prime example of why I use this lubricant and why it works so well. It's 100% dry and it doesn't leave any film behind. So. We can go ahead and take a look at the uh, at this, and you'll see and notice that there's no burning, there's no debris inside, there's no everything's nice and clean in there. That's what we want to see. Even through the water and all the other testing and everything else, um, it, it still managed to survive and do that well. Uh, and I have the springs and everything over here that we can take a look at as well. So we can take a look at these springs. Notice the pins aren't very dirty. Cylinder's not burnt. Nothing crazy is going on there. Um, and that is the 100% dry. Um, the next one, we'll just go ahead and get onto it, is the tri-flow here. Now you can start to see all the debris uh, and, and things that are in there and then the, the uh, stuff that's sticking to it because it's that oily lubricant. Uh, and this was one of my favorites, uh, the tri-flow. So, you know, it, it, it just goes to show that you never know until you really put it in the field and see what it does. You also notice some burning going on here. Uh, that's the material starting to break down again. And then look inside. Oh my goodness. Who thought TriFlow would have that much junk and gunk sticking in there? Um, so, um, once again, you're just never going to know until we put it to the test. And then we go ahead and pull this out and see how they stick. They should not do that. They should all fall right back down into place. And this is why we don't put oil-based lubricants into a lock. This is exactly the prime example. All that stuff builds up and see how it doesn't fall back down. Now I know inside there the springs force it down, but if you ever had a spring collapse or get over, over crushed or something like that, um, you know, this is going to be the result and it's going to be a lock that fails. So TriFlow um, is not one of my better suggestions. Uh, it's a good lubricant uh, for, for other things, uh, but for locks, I would not say so. Um, let's see here. Now we got our PTFE spray right here. We can notice a little bit of gunk sticking on there and it started to darken a little bit, but not much. Now again, those just pop right in and out, see? Right in and out. And um, move very smoothly. So, you know, for, for a lubricant right here, this is now a very, very good lubricant, um, in my opinion. There is a little bit of debris that's stuck on there, 
uh, but nothing too crazy. It doesn't look as bad as the other ones. Let's go ahead and uh, check out the pins there. And the cylinder. And then we'll check out the cylinder right here. Not very much gunk stuck in there. Uh, pretty clean, to be honest, really. So. PTFE spray uh, does pretty darn good. Um, you know, this was kind of disappointing. I really like this uh, this lubricant, and in from what the packaging says, it's supposed to be a, a semi-dry formula, uh, but it did seem to to collect quite a bit of gunk on here. Um, and if we move that up, you can see how those pins stick again. We don't want to see that. We sh they should all drop back down in there, and they don't. So we'll insert that key again and again they're not falling back down so that is not a good sign I am not going to be using this lubricant for locks anymore simply because of that right there take a look inside the cylinder had a little bit of burning a little bit of browning on this one but nothing too major nothing too bad so you know, maybe bicycle chains, stuff like that, um, might be something good for that. Uh, and here's our WD-40. Um, you can notice significant uh, charring. So it, it does start to break down pretty good uh, with the heat seems to be what did that. And then once again, the gunk inside. So WD-40, kind of the dirty word here. Um, it's not the worst, uh, but it's it's, it's not very good either. Um, go ahead and pick this up. Try this. So we are still getting some sticking. They should all fall down. They are not doing so. And once again, those pins sticking up there. So not the worst, um, but far from the best as well. Let's get a little picture of the Close up of the pins right here. So that's the pins and the cylinder with the WD-40. Uh, moving right along, we've got our silicone spray. And with our silicone spray, let's see what we got here. We have some dirt and debris sticking in there, um, but not too bad. And then most of the pins fell back down into place here. Um, most of them did. So this one isn't too bad either, but you can still see you'd rather not have that kind of gunky stuff built up in there. Um, that would definitely not be ideal as opposed to the, the, the dry formulas that we've used. Um, so let's set that back down. Take a look inside the cylinder. See, there is some goop in there, um, but not not too bad either. Uh, now we got our white lithium grease. Go ahead and I thought this one might be the worst one of them all. You can see once again we're sticking. Um, so it is a, it is one of the heaviest compounds out of all of them. So you're definitely going to have that stuff sticking in there like that. Um, and there's inside of here so you can see we had plenty of gunky buildup in there but it didn't seem to burn or break down too bad uh, so it did handle the heat very well uh, if this is something that you know um, maybe you need to lubricate something that's going to continuously be cleaned and then re-lubricated this could be a good idea but um, not I mean it's not the best here uh, so let's take a look at these pins and definitely see that there's some stuff sticking on them here And that's going to be a white lithium grease. Uh, and then we have our good old graphite. Uh, I hate to say it, but man, this thing, this this graphite did awesome. Um, everything's moving nice and smooth in there. Uh, you know, no gunky buildup. Uh, did pretty much the same thing the Teflon did. Uh, so, you know, kudos to graphite. I just hate working with it because it makes a mess out of everything. Um, it's just so darn hard to, to keep clean 
with that when you're working with it. And then again, the cylinder right here, um, looking very, very well as well. Nice and clean, nothing breaking down. Um, even though it's black graphite going in there, that still managed to be one of the cleanest ones of them all uh, in terms of you know what the cylinder looks like afterwards. So after doing this testing, I'm going to put these in my order. Um, we're going to use that as number one. We're going to use that as number two. Use this as number three. Uh, can use this as number four. Uh, what else did we have here? Tri flow. This will be the order in how I would rank these uh, from beginning to end, favorite to least favorite, um, in terms of everything working properly here. So we got our 100% uh, dry Teflon, um, we got our graphite, we got PTFE spray, we got uh, silicone spray, triflow, uh, multi purpose Teflon, semi dry, uh, WD, and then the white lithium grease. So that was fun. Uh, I hope everybody learned something and uh, now the, the truth is out there and you actually see what it looks like. Remember, the worst things for locks is heat, water, and dirt. Um, and any of the lubricants that have oil-based um, oil based stuff in them, they're going to attract that kind of stuff. Uh, and they're going to break down in the heat. The only thing they're going to do is provide some resistance to moisture, but um, it's kind of not worth it in the long run. So thanks for watching. Check out the website below. Please subscribe and uh, stay tuned in case we do some more testing on other products. Hey guys, it's the end of the video. Um, you know, help me out and help me help you out. Uh, right below the description box right here is a red subscribe button. Subscribe to me and then you're going to get the latest and greatest information that I put out. Sometimes it applies to you, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, it, it's just going to at least let you know that uh, we're putting out new and current information. And then right over here is a thumbs up button. Give me a thumbs up. Help this video uh, rank higher in the searches for the search terms that you're using and let other people be able to see this. Um, you know, that's the best way you can help. Interact, leave a comment. I will get back with you if I can and try and help you answer your questions. But the more you interact and post this to Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and spread this through the social media, uh, the more that allows me to be able to help do more videos. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and uh, subscribe share and like. Thanks a lot guys. Appreciate it.